today I'm going to go through what are loss functions in machine learning. So we use loss to train machine learning models. And the loss function explains the difference between the current and the wanted model output or the model prediction. And the goal is to make this difference between the current and the wanted model output to be as small as possible. And this is why we want to minimize the loss. The entire purpose of every single node in a neural network is working to minimize the loss. And over time, this is how the model will get better because it will make its prediction and then it will compare that prediction to the wanted prediction. And then we make tweaks to lower the difference between the current and the wanted. So how does this work? Well, backpropagation is the algorithm we use to kind of update the model throughout the training. And backpropagation asks one question over and over. It says to every weight and every parameter in the network, what happens to the loss? It would tweak this param parameter a tiny bit. And then we want to tweak it in such a way that the loss goes down for each training iteration. So really asking, how do we tweak every single number in this neural network so that the loss gets lower? And this is really what we're optimizing when we're training a neural network. And this is also why the loss function and the choice of loss function is so important because it really defines the goal of what our neural network is doing. And the loss is computed at the last step, as we can see on the right. And then we compare against that last step throughout the entire network in what is known as backpropagation. So for example, we have, uh, for example, the um, data points in blue here. And let's say we want to fit a line to these blue points. Well, this line is kind of a function with two tr uh, learnable parameters or the mx plus b or w1x minus b here. Um, and what we want to do is we want to minimize the loss. We want to minimize the difference between our predicted line and these real data points. And in the beginning, the loss will be very high, meaning that we have a large difference in the predicted and wanted outcomes. But over time, we can update our line to be closer to the real ones so that the difference is smaller. And eventually, we're getting to a line where the loss is not really improving that much. And here we can kind of say that we have trained a model and it's as good as it's going to get. And when it comes to loss functions, there are two main types of loss functions we use, regression and for classification problems. So regression problems is like the one we mentioned before on the other slide. This is when we want to predict a continuous variable. It can range uh, any, variable, uh, any value between, for example, 0 and 1 or 0 and 100. I want to predict the number on that uh, number scale. And the most common one is called the mean squared error, MSE, or the L2 loss. And really what we're doing is we're taking all of these differences between our predictions and the data points, we add them up, and we also make sure to square them so that um, if we were having like a negative and a positive difference that we don't cancel each other out. So we square them and then we divide by N and that will be the number of the samples that we use. So this is the complete formula, is we're saying, hey, sum up, so from one to n, so all our samples, and we want to make, take a difference between the true label, the correct label, and the prediction, so yi minus y hat i, but we square that to make sure that we are not um, letting the positive and negative differences cancel each other out, and then we take the average. And the really pros of this one is that it's simple and efficient. And you also have one unique uh, minimum, which you can kind of optimize towards. But the cause is that it's not robust to outliers. And this is because of the squared term. Because we are squaring the distance, if you have one data point, which is really, really off, that distance is really going to affect the loss, um, which makes it not that robust to outliers. It can kind of explode the loss. And is also scale dependent. So another one you can use if the data contains many outliers is to use the mean absolute error or the Huber loss. And also to make its scale independent, you can also consider using a root mean squared error. And these are just variations of this one. So for example, for the mean absolute error, 
instead of squaring, we're doing just an absolute value. So we're not um, having the problem of negative and positive differences, but we're not really squaring the distances, making it more robust to outliers, which can be both a pro uh, and a con, depending on if you want to penalize or not the outliers. It's also known as L1 loss. However, if you take an absolute difference, it's not going to be differenti uh, differentiable at all points because you kind of got to have this little um, edge um, at zero. And the Huber loss is kind of saying, well, I kind of want a little bit of both then. So I want it to um, be working with the square differences very close to the predictions, but then as I'm going further away, um, we can use, um, use the absolute error instead. So here, the Huber loss is kind of splitting it up and also making sure that we have a differentiable um, when we're getting closer to zero. Um, and it also makes it more robust to outliers. Um, the only errors or cons here is that with this um, split, you're increasing the complexity, it can introduce bugs when you're coding it up, and you also have this extra uh, parameter called delta, which is your threshold for what should be considered a small error. So you have another kind of hyper parameter that you need to tune and need to find a good value for. Next up is classification. So classification is all about putting things into categories, and these can be everything from two categories to thousands of categories. And one of the most common things that unify the classification loss functions is what is known as cross entropy. And cross entropy really means the negative log loss. But what does this mean? The simplest kind is called the binary cross entropy loss, or BCE. And this is when we want to classify things into two categories, thus the binary. And again, the loss here is we want to try and penalize wrong predictions. And we want to assign large values to wrong predictions and small values to correct predictions. So because we have two categories, we really only have two scenarios. If the correct label is one, so let's say here we want to classify if something is water or land, we want to penalize predictions that are close to zero. So if we represent water by one and land by zero, we can see on the left here that we have one example where we predicted um, something that was um, land, but we predicted it um, to be uh, water or, for, or vice versa. And if the correct label is zero, we want to penalize predictions close to one. And how does this work? Well, we use what we know uh, as the negative log loss. And on the left here, we can see um, the negative log curve. And if the correct label is one, we're gonna call that y1 is equal to one. Then we want to see the loss curve is gonna be the negative log of the probability of us or the model predicting a one. So if the model predicts one, that means it's a good prediction. And if we look at the graph, we can see that indeed negative log of one is zero. So we've made a perfect prediction, so we're not gonna add any penalty for that prediction. However, if the model predicts zero when it should have predicted one, we can see that the negative log goes all the way up to infinity almost. So it's gonna add a lot of penalty to the loss function, making the model really want to change this prediction. And similarly, we have the other case when the correct label is zero. And now we really want to use negative log one minus our, predi uh, pr um, our predicted outcome. Because in this case, let's say the correct label is zero and we predict zero, then negative log of one minus zero is gonna be negative log of one, which again gives us zero, meaning it's a good prediction and a low penalty. But if we predict one when the correct label is zero, we're gonna get closer to that log of negative log of zero again making that a high penalty. And putting all of this together, we have this formula right here. So it just takes these two parts to say when the correct label is one in the blue box, we're going to keep the log of the probability we're predicting it to be one. And then in the orange box, if the correct label is one, it, that other term is just gonna go away. And then we're gonna add that loss function together and then for the next sample, perhaps the correct label is zero. Then the blue box would go away and the orange box would stay. And here we're um, getting the value, which is log one minus the probability that we talked about in the last slide. 
we add all of those up and then take the average and that's what you see here. So we sum them all up and then one over n for the number of samples that we have. And the pros of this, it's quite simple and efficient. It's differentiable, but it can have problems with class imbalance, i.e. where maybe one of the two categories are just much, much larger than the other. For example, in many maybe disease studies, um, for a very uncommon disease, you know, maybe 95% of cases will be healthy cases and only 5% or much, much less will be the actual disease states. And in those cases, you could consider using a weighted binary cross entropy loss where you kind of give more weight to these um, smaller classes, although they are um, smaller in number. And if you don't just want to classify things into two things, there's a kind of a generalization of the binary cross entropy called categorical cross entropy. And this is where you can classify things into many categories. And what we can see here is that we do two summations. So we add in an inner summation with a number of categories. But again, we're kind of saying multiply the correct label by our predicted label, the log. And what's special about the categorical cross entropy is that we must um, kind of use a specific format for a correct labeling called a one-hot encoding. And that just means that we have um, our correct label with zero uh, is a one uh, and all the other that's not the right um, categories yield is zero. So to represent the second category, we would use zero, one, zero, zero, zero. And again here, if the data contains class imbalance, we can use focal loss instead. And in if we don't want to use a, a one-hot encoding, but rather use an integer like category one, category two, category three, we can use the sparse categorical cross entropy loss. And just a final note on the difference between a performance metric and loss is that we use the loss again to train a machine learning model. And the performance metrics are used to evaluate the model. So the performance metrics are used after model training to evaluate, compare, and test models against the task at hand. And different models can use different loss functions, but the end goal is to perform well on these performance metrics. So you might evaluate the uh, models using the same metrics, but they might have been trained with different loss functions. So we can kind of say that the loss is a means to an end. And the loss just quantifies the road to get there and the performance metrics is then telling us how well we actually ended up at. I hope this video helped you understand loss in a better way, and here are my references. And with that, thank you for watching.